The subject of the next lecture is on strain, and that strain is based on deformations. Why do we need strain? We need strain because it is a quantity which describes deformation, but is independent of the frame of reference. It is independent of whether you do it in a still laboratory or in a high speed train or in a space station or anywhere else. So strain contains information without motion, without translation, without velocities. It contains the information of how point P, point Q are changing relative to each other. We begin with the translation vector or the deformation vector UP. And UP is a vector, it has components as indicated by I, and it acts at position X1, X2, X3, which are the positions of the point P. Okay, so the UP vector points from P to P prime. And equivalently, we have a Q vector, which points from point Q to Q prime. Points P and Q are distant by delta L1. And when we deform the object, dotted line is undeformed, solid line is deformed shape. When we deform the object, uh, then point P will move, point Q will move, and they will also move relative to each other. The line element will change its length. Delta L1 prime is a new length, and it will change its orientation. Now, the translation of P to P prime and Q to Q prime has vec is described by a vector, which is a function of the position of the point where we start with. And therefore, we can apply the Taylor series trick again. Taylor series of the displacement vector in point Q, that one we can approximate by the displacement vector in point P, plus the distance, and this is delta L1 in this case chosen, and the first order derivative of the displacement vector relative co to coordinate number one. Okay, and if the delta L1 is small enough, then we can ignore all the higher order terms, second derivatives, third derivatives, and so on. Now, the point P prime and Q prime, this is just the position where point P started plus the vector. This is vector addition. Point Q prime is the position where we started plus delta L1 to go from P to Q plus the displacement in point P plus the approximation, which makes it the displacement in point Q. So du1, dx1, delta L1, du2, dx1, delta L1, and so on. Okay, so these are the new points obtained by vector addition. Now, from the new points, we can calculate the length of the line segment P prime Q prime, there should be P prime Q prime here. The length of the line segment in the deformed configuration in the deformed shape is delta L1 prime. And you remember that you calculate a length by taking the inner product of a vector it's of itself, with itself. And we get this vector by taking the difference of Q prime to P prime in the first, second, and third component. The inner product you can get from the P prime Q prime definition. You can insert everything here. Then you get something which is proportional to delta L1 squared. All the terms contain delta L1. We can take it out of the square root. And what remains are partial derivatives. Now, for the example chosen, horizontal direction, namely, uh, we, uh, only one partial derivative remains in first order with a prefactor of two. All the other partial derivatives are already second power. So if our assumption is true, and we have a small displacement, small deformation gradient or derivative. If this is small, then the square is much, much smaller, much smaller, one much is enough. And uh, we can ignore the second power terms and only work with the first. Okay, this is written now in the mathematical form. Now, delta L1 prime, is the same as delta L1, that's the first term, plus the change of delta L1. So the partial derivative has the meaning of a change of length. Okay, and this is the definition of the strain then. 
delta L1 is change of length divided by original length. We insert definitions from the previous slide and we get this partial derivative. So this partial derivative means change of length relative to its original. And this is the definition of engineering strain. OK. For the other directions, as usual, if we do the same in the two direction or in the three direction, then we get the same derivatives, just other indices. And those things will become the normal or the diagonal elements of the so-called strain tensor. More details on this later. End of 4.1. Next section will be on shear strain.